pray that wherever you are, that you have just enough time to isolate yourself so that you won't be disrupted. On tonight, I want to say that I have been here, as always, um, coming to the church on Wednesdays as, as, a, as a part of my ritual where I spend all day in consecration and preparation. And tonight, I just, being led by the Lord, it is, it would be normal. I have prepared uh, our normal study, but as I finished preparing, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me concerning today, and I know that it would be almost irresponsible of me as a pastor because I don't uh, talk about politics and I, this is not about politics, but I cannot not address today for those all over the country, however you may feel. I'm not talking about any particular party, but I do understand that God is always in control. And I want to make sure that is not just a church or religious uh, slogan, but we all have to be reminded that more than there is a democracy in this country, we are a part of a theocracy, which is God ruled. There is another kingdom here. And the Lord just placed on my heart today that we would recognize him as reigning supreme. And we understand the doctrine of election where he chose us. He chose us. We didn't choose him. He chose us. And he didn't have to, but he did. But I believe that it is appropriate in the sense that we don't spend time here. I believe that our vote is our civic responsibility. I'll say that again. It's our civic responsibility. It is the way that our government is set up, and we all have a role to play whether you choose to or not. That is a right that has been uh, afforded to you based on the way that this country is set up. And my role is not to talk about any one candidate because neither one of them can save me. Only Jesus is my savior. And I, I, when I say that, the Lord just pricked me on today as I finished up the study and said that even as a shepherd that he has uh, charged me to be, it is not to ignore those who may feel disheartened and distressed. And some on the other side may be celebrating and over the top believing that all of their all of their problems will be answered by someone that don't know them but i want to let you know that god knows you and he knows exactly not just what you need but who you need and the lord led me just to this scripture tonight and i am going to just suspend what I have prepared, and I'm going to go in the direction that the Lord has given me, which is 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. This text, as I was meditating earlier with the lesson tonight in mind, I put down my Bible and just began to meditate on what the Lord had already given me and thinking in preparation of what I was going to minister tonight from living God's way. And it was as if this just rumbled in my spirit. And I'm going to read almost all of it. Um, it may seem like a lot, but it's 20-something verses in chapter 8. I'm reading from the New King James. Yours may read a little different. 
And it says, now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba, but his sons did not walk in his ways or in Samuel's ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain, took bribes, and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel of Ramah and said to Samuel, look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people. Y'all see that? In all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them out of Egypt even to this day with which they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are doing to you also. Now therefore heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly, solemnly forewarn them. I'm reading this slow. I'm reading it slow. I'm reading it slow. And show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen. And some will run before his chariots. He will appoint captains over his thousands. And captains over his fifties will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest. And some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. Verse 13. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. And he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves, and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants. And he will take your male servants your female servants, your finest young men, and your donkeys, and put them to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep, and you will be his servants. 
and you will cry out in the day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, nevertheless, remember I told you on Sunday, nevertheless is in spite of, in spite of what they heard, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations. We want to be like everybody else. And that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people and he repeated them in the hearing of the Lord. So the Lord said to Samuel, heed their voice and make them a king. Last verse, or last part of the verse 21. And Samuel said to the men of Israel, every man go home, go to his city. I, I, I read this text because this is what the Lord ga gave me, and this is not to disparage uh, President Trump or Vice President Kamala Harris or Senator Ted Cruz or Governor Abbott or our city mayor or council members. I'm reading this because no matter who we choose, we all must understand that it is God that chooses us. And when we don't choose him, this is a prime example where this is a case where what happens when God gives you what he doesn't really want you to have. We believe that God will answer prayer. Even the prayer that he doesn't want to say yes to, he will answer. And I've said this throughout the series of not my will, but I will. That there's one thing that God is not going to override. It's your will. And whatever you will, God is not going to force you to love him. He's not going to force you to obey him. He's not going to force you to do his will. He's not going to force you to do his work. He's not going to force you to fulfill the purpose that he put in you to assign. God gave you free will. He, he, he is so amazing that God can make you do anything he wants you to do by just speaking it. And you could do it, but he saw fit to just say, you know what, I want a willing heart. He led me here. And I believe that all of us are guilty, every single one of us, everybody, every, every last one of us, because we put our stock in people. Because they make promises that we all know they can't keep. They tell us something because we just want them to make us feel good. We want it today. Many people wanted to just wake up and be celebratory and thinking that everything was going to be okay. But no matter who's in office, nobody's going to override what God will allow. I couldn't help. I couldn't help that even as last night I was here at the church for a few hours yesterday and, and all that could, would come to me was if my people 
would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It's something when God calls his own people wicked. We want to point the finger at the world. But he is saying, no, you're wicked. How is it that we can be wicked? Because we will forsake him for what we want. And we will be relentless in pursuing what we want and hope God will endorse everything we want, even though God is saying, that's not what I want for you. I don't want that for you. These, these, these people had, in, 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 in 1 Samuel, Israel had Samuel to judge over them, and he appointed his sons. His sons wasn't living right, and they looked at Samuel, and they said, Samuel, you getting old. Don't that sound familiar? You too old, you can't see, but you got your sons judging, and your sons are not judging like you. They don't give us what we want like you. They don't, they don't have the relationship with God that you have. They're doing any and everything they want to do. It says they're taking bribes. They're after dishonest gain. And they, they believe that abandoning, abandoning what God has set, they can make it better. Our election system has us all polarized. We can split it right down. We got black against white, Asian against Latino, Muslim against Christian, man against woman, church against church. Now, that's, 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 that, that to me is something within itself. It's church against church. We're fighting not for the kingdom's sake, but for our political beliefs and believing that God is standing on the side of our politics. When he says, I got my own kingdom. Y'all fighting over a kingdom that ain't even mine. He said, render unto Caesar that which belongs to Caesar and render unto God that which belongs to God. Some of us are spending sleepless nights and tossing and turning and watching the news and checking our, our social media feeds in order to, we just want to find some solace. But I know one thing, there's no other place I can go for peace except to God. It's the only place I can go. Israel mirrors us. Our system is set up to choose who we believe will lead us where is best for us. We want the politician to do what we want, knowing that it, the record has been proven that the majority, the vast majority, this is not everybody, I know this is a general statement, but the vast majority will forget about you once they take their oaths of office and they say they will promise to defend, but once they get in, it's a completely different story. It's every man out for himself. And I believe that what God has purposed, he has purposed to place us in a place that no matter what you see on the news, no matter what you hear on the radio, no matter what you hear in the workspace around the, the water cooler, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. My safe place is in his shadow. I look, I can tell you right now that we're looking for a perfect world. We want everything to go the way we want it to, and we don't want no hiccups or nothing. But I need to let us all know something. Trouble is coming. 
And trouble was already coming before this election. Trouble is coming. And the thing is that it's already written in the script. But what, you're, what are you going to do when the trouble get here? Every, every, every man is for himself. But one thing I know, God is for me. And I just can't stand here and just act as if that my problems were going to be solved with me just casting a ballot. Again, that was my civic duty. That was, that's something that we do where you can choose not to, you can choose to, you can, you can, choose, you can choose A, you can choose B. You can, all of us got different desires on what we choose. Some of us just go in and close our eyes and just, just pick one because we don't know we don't, we, don't, we don't know, we don't know the issues. We don't understand it, we don't, we don't know the ballot initiatives. We don't know what concerns our own community. We don't know what concerns our mama, our daddy, our grandma. We don't know what concerns our children. We don't know. And I'll say this, that the Lord is like, when you don't know. You know, that's gonna be the problem when you, when you don't inform yourself. And some of us are so astute when it comes to the earthly stuff that we're completely ignorant when it comes to the kingdom matters. It's not like God doesn't care about it because this is a part of his plan. Ain't nothing taking him off guard. God is not sitting up there going, oh, my God, what happened? Oh, Lord. Some of us woke up this morning and was like, okay, what happened? God was like, they couldn't do nothing without me. And some of us just knew that someone was going to make our life easier, but the enemy is still at work. He's still at work. Samuel was so, he was hurt by it because he knew that God had chosen him for the assignment, and Samuel goes to God, heartbroken because the people don't want the judge anymore. They don't want to be judged anymore. They have seen what everybody else got. That's just like us. We're not happy with the house that God blessed us with. We, we look at our neighbors down the street. Oh, theirs is bigger than mine. Oh, we don't, we don't like the husband or the wife that we got. We look at somebody else's husband or wife and we think that because they're holding hands, theirs is better than ours. Oh no, we don't we don't like we don't we don't we don't like you know the store that they they go to or the store we go to we we like where they go and so we will will we are willing to even spend more than we have to spend in order to do what we think somebody else is doing. Just like that, they're watching other nations. Y'all, we have gotten to the place. I had already. I had already gone down this, this vein. The Lord had already been telling me, you know, I need you to get off social media. Just, just get off. And there's a period where I would be on social media and I would take a hiatus for about three months and then come back and then I would see, hey, nothing changed. I deactivate again. It's almost like social media is almost like leaving an old neighborhood moving far away and God accomplishing you so well and you decide that you know what I want to go back to the old neighborhood and see what they doing I miss home so bad I miss what I'm and you you get on a plane and you go all the way back to where you grew up and you get off the plane and you go back to your old neighborhood and you see all the old people that you grew up with doing the same thing you were doing when you left 30 years ago. You go back, you see the same guys on the corner holding the same 40 ounce, smoking the same black and mild, sitting on the car telling the same jokes and then they see you and it's like, you wanted to come back here so bad. And God is saying, I'm trying to change you. I'm trying to change your life. 
but you want to go back. You see what they doing? I was in, y'all, I was, I, 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 I was, I, I went into the military and, and I went to Europe. Now back then it wasn't like it is now where you got your phone and they let them take their phones and they can connect. I went to Europe and had to be in Europe for a year before I could come home. Oh no, that was the standard. You couldn't go to Germany and then see what your family was doing on a TV monitor. You had to write them in a letter and then wait 10 days for it to be delivered and then if they're gonna respond, wait for a response. And I'm sitting there and I'm just, Oh, I miss home. Homesick. Thank you. Just gave me a message. You homesick. You, 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 you on an assignment. God is growing you and you out of the country. And God is like, I'm going to grow you. I'm going to give you some independence. I'm going to give you some strength. I'm going get, to get you beyond your fears. And you at home... You, I'm over there, I'm laying in my bed, tears running down my face, because I miss home. I miss my friends. I miss the church that I attended. I miss doing what we were doing, going out and eating breakfast late at night. I miss all of that stuff. And then you, I, a year comes, I get on a plane, can't wait to get back. Plane, plane lands. I rush home change my clothes, hit the street, only to find out that the very thing they were doing when I left, it's almost as if all you do is hit pause. And once you get back, hit pause again and it takes off from where you left off. These people, they see. They want what they want. They want what they got. We in this country want what everybody got. And our desires are not his desires. What he desires of us, he says, my plans are not your plans. My thoughts are neither your thoughts. But our thing is, we don't want his thoughts. And we don't want his plans. Because his plans don't feel good. His plans don't take us to the highest stratosphere. I'm almost done. He said, no. Samuel, you old. You too old. We need someone young. But we don't want them to be a judge. Because your sons... Instead of them saying, give us different judges, they said, no, we don't want judges. We want a king. Now, why is this a problem? Because God is the king. He just has judges. He speaks to Samuel and tells Samuel how to judge his people. His people says, oh, no, we, 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 we antiquated. Oh, no, this is too old. Y'all know how we do. Oh, that's old. That's old. We, we moving on with the times now. Everybody else got kings. Give us a king. Give, give us a king. You would think that I'm sure Samuel went to God thinking God was going to say, no, they ain't getting no king. Because he went there. He said, they want, they, Lord, they want a king. He says, give them what they ask for. And I want to say this. I've been saying this. Y'all could ask my wife. I said that this country is going to get what we ask for because we ain't asking for God. We asking for a politician. Oh, yeah. And we ain't going to. I ain't talking about the world. The politician has come up in the church and we have made a vacancy for the politician to talk about 
out there. But God is saying, the kingdom suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. We don't even know that the enemy has stepped in and started snatching stuff. We don't even know that our lives of holiness have been snatched and we are living these lives of debauchery and sin and we're thinking that it's okay because we see what they're doing. We want what they got. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is. That's where the liberty is. Y'all, what we got is this fake freedom. Because we think we choose and we got the freedom. We're the ones choosing. Little do we know we're choosing our own bondage. Yeah. God says, no. He says, heed their voice. He says, Samuel, they didn't reject you. Get out your feelings. He said, get out your feelings. They didn't reject you, but they rejected me. He said, they're rejecting me. They're rejecting me. We, the church, the body of Christ, the church universal. I ain't talking about the black church. I'm talking about the black church, the white church, the Asian church. I'm talking about the church universal. We have rejected him. We like our music and our dancing. Y'all, Lord, help me. That's one thing. This is just me. Social media, I can't, I can't take too much. Because we, get, we thrive off of, oh, that, that, that shouting music and, and that dancing around the church and running around and, 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 and throwing our hands up. But what is your life like? What happens after you've had your, your emotional acrobatics? Now, I, I believe there's always a place to celebrate. I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking nobody. But y'all, we got to understand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand right now. Not because of the election, but because the Lord in his word told us these things were going to happen. We call in right, wrong. And wrong, right. We call in the truth. A lie, and the lie, the truth. People are killing us because of the truth. Y'all, y'all, look, this is not one of those woes because I fully believe in the Lord. Hallelujah. Count it all joy when you fall into Diverse temptations, the temptation to doubt, the temptation to, to waver, the temptation to be concerned, and the temptation to be distressed. He said, count it all joy when you can't control it. This, this right here is for the, your, your, your perfection. This, this is strengthening you. So many of us, we were counting, you know, we were counting on our job. My retirement. Oh, Lord, in four years, I'm going to retire. I'm going to have this. And God is like, okay, I'm going to slip this right from under you because you think you're controlling it. When my plan says you rely on me, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall. When you lean on him, he's not saying, oh, I, I, I might show up. He says, no, when you lean all on me, I got you. I know people around you, whether you're here on this line or you're here in person and you feel like the world is falling apart, let me say this. To us, it is falling apart. Let's, 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 because by design, the world doesn't know that it needs a savior. And, 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 and Kamala Harris is not the savior. Donald Trump is not the savior. The White House is not the savior. This is why the refuge I come through these doors. And I say, God, I thank you for your presence. Because your presence remains when everybody else leaves. 
Y'all don't, don't be distraught. Don't be discouraged. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy is going to come in the morning. Now that joy, I'm going to tell y'all something now. That joy, that joy is a little different. That ain't happiness. Joy is not, oh, joy comes in spite of what circumstances are. God, I know the outcome. That joy tells you the outcome ain't what you see with your own eyes. I, I, I read this text. And I see the people want what they want. Samuel feels rejected from his assignment. It feels as if he's neglected. They don't want him. They told him he's too old. No, they said, you too old. You can't, ain't nothing you can do for us. You can't do nothing for us. Even though your sons are taking advantage of what belongs to God. The people didn't say, well, God, we coming to you because look at what they're doing. No, they want to change what God's plan is. They want to change his plan. I can't say I know what God's plan is. I don't know what his plan is. Except concerning me. Which is that everything that he desires to do is to be glorified through me. Now, what do I do? What do we do? Do we walk around and be like, oh, Lord, oh, God, help us, Lord Jesus, help us. <laughs> no, this is man-made stuff. And everything man touches falls apart. I say this, that when you sum it all up, God is waking us up. He's waking us up from our sleep and our slumber because we want life to just be comfortable for us. But I told you, no, if you want some of this, you're going to have to get pressed. <laughs> How prophetic is that word that he's going to press this out of you? That we thought that this was just going to be we was going to skate through this, and it was going to be, oh, we was going to be like, oh, we're done with that. God is like, no, uh-uh. No, there's still some purging that's got to be done. It's got to be done, some purge. It, it, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm closing. Jeremiah, it comes to me, the prophet Jeremiah had to prophesy and speak what the people did not want to hear. He said, if y'all repent, if you repent, God will save us. They wouldn't repent. Read it in your study. It was so much so that God is like, no, they ain't going to listen. Even Jeremiah, who's given the message, he wanted to be married. He wanted to have his own family. And God was like, look, what I'm sending your way, you can't get married. You can't have no kids. Why, God, why? Because what's coming is so terrible that your family won't be able to sustain what's coming. Why? Because of our disobedience. Because of our sin. I'm just reminded, thank you, Holy Spirit. You say, well, Lord, I love you. I'm living my life for you. The scripture comes to mind, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. What does that mean? If we walk outside and it's pouring down. Just because you say, don't mean you ain't going to get wet. Well, Lord, I'm, why do I got to be? Because God shows us that it is a collective. He didn't say, if Gerald which is called by my name, would humble himself. He said, if my people. He makes it known that he wants us collectively. Why? Because he wants to do that. He wants to do that work in all of us, not just some of us. This is not a selfish work. It's a selfless work. We made, we made kingdom work a selfish work. This is not a selfish work. 
is selfless. Everything that we do in the kingdom has to benefit someone else. If you're saying, oh, me and my family got it together, that's why God is like, no, it's going to rain on you too. It's going to rain on you too because, yeah, you got yours together, but who you getting? Who else you trying to say? Oh, no, 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 I got, Lord, we did ours. No, he said, go into the highway and the hedges. Compel them to come. We just want our family saved. But we don't know that the mission for the gate church and every other church is to go out. Not in here. Church ain't in here. Thank you, Lord. Church is not in here. This ain't, this ain't it. It's outside them doors. Under them bridges, right outside them doors. Where those people think nobody cares about them but the only Jesus that they will see will be the Jesus that is in you I pray that tonight and henceforth that we stop putting our stock in people and put our stock in God Notice, I, 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 we sing this, God gave me this song, we have made this our theme song at the gate church is to have faith in God. It's not something that, that I just can't, we just sing, it's something, God gave me that when we started. Because so many people will rely on me. I will be the Kamala Harris, I will be the Donald Trump. People in church will come to me and think that it's in me. If, it's, if, if they just come to the pastor, but you have your own relationship with the Lord. He says, work out your own salvation in fear and in trembling. He said, no, you got to be serious about this. You can't be jovial and playing around as if this ain't serious. I pray that you all, you know, Hold your head up. Lift your head up. The one we serve ain't on the ground. He sits high and looks down on us who are low. And he deserves all, not some of it. Look, they celebrate. Everybody celebrate. Look, I, I, trust me on this. Kamala Harris is going to be fine. She got hers. All of them politicians, they got theirs. And they're going to go on about their life and they're going to make millions and, and, and they're going to they they make money hand over fist if they hadn't already done it. And while we sitting here thinking that they're going to do it for us, they're doing it for themselves. But one thing I know, God owns cattle on a thousand hill. And he's like, I don't want to keep these cattle for myself. I want to give them to you. I told y'all, we want, we want the blessing, but we don't want that pressing. You're going to be pressed to get blessed. Not the other way around. I want you to think about it. It ain't the other way around. In order to be blessed, you're going to have to be pressed. That you're going to have to be pressed, pressed, out of, pressed out of yourself so that he can be glorified. I pray that you have a blessed rest of this week. I want to challenge all of you, whether you're on this line or here in person, before you pull your legs up in the bed tonight, fall on your knees, and you thank God that your eyes are able to see how amazing God is in 2024.